Coming up, the woman who is Iran's most beloved pop singer gives her L.A. fans a rare performance. Fans of the Iranian singer Gagush packed the Hollywood Bowl on Saturday night. When the pop diva stepped on stage, the crowd went wild and leapt to his feet, and many people even cried. And that's because a live Gagouche performance is incredibly rare, despite her worldwide fame. As a Persian woman, Gagouche was banned from singing in public in her home country after Iran's 1979 Islamic Revolution. More than 20 years passed before a more tolerant Iranian government allowed her to travel abroad to sing again. We sent Frame contributor Marcos Nahada to the bowl to talk with Gagush and check out the show. And he joined me in the studio this morning to fill us in on what transpired. I imagine it's like one of those things where you haven't seen a friend in a really long time and they come back into your life and it's as if no time has passed. That's what it felt like. You know, I mean, the moment she stepped on stage, the crowd leapt to their feet. People were crying. They were singing along. They were cheering. It was beautiful. There were some special surprises in the show, too. She reunited with her uh, former lyricist and songwriter uh, from Iran. And people just lost their minds. So special. Afterwards, you know, I talk with people, and uh, they mentioned that it was painful in a way to hear these words because she was singing about freedom. She was singing about memories. The show was called The Memory Makers Tour. And they realized that uh, it's still an issue today. Why was this a historic concert? What's the background here? Well, you know, you mentioned it earlier that the Gugush concert, a Gugush concert is so rare because she was silenced in Iran for nearly two decades. And on Saturday night, the Los Angeles-based Fairhang Foundation sponsored the show. Afterwards, I spoke with the foundation's executive director, Ali Reza Ardakani. Imagine Beyonce today, and tomorrow suddenly there's a revolution, and she can no, no longer perform, or Madonna, or anyone, any of the top stars right now. It, it just must be a horrific thing to go through as an artist. Uh, so I have so much respect for her, for what she's been through, and how she's persevered all these years. Artakani points out that Gagouche made history on Saturday night by being the first Iranian woman to headline at the bowl. And we're not just talking about Iranian performers who might have been part of an ensemble, but this was a headliner. Gagouche was the star. Of the night. So for people who don't know, she was popular not just for her singing, but she was kind of a cultural and even a fashion icon. Do I have that right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you think about an artist like Madonna, John, you know, whose music is already big, but but who makes a dent in the fashion world, that is Gagouche. But, you know, as you know, then came the late 70s and the revolution in Iran. So I asked Gagouche about her life before, during, and after those tumultuous times of 1979. I was uh, in L.A. when revolution happened. Uh, I found myself uh, almost homeless, without money. I went to New York for a few months. In that timing, uh, Khomeini came to Iran, and they uh, called me, and they said, if you come, uh, they're going to kill you. But I felt that I am dying little by little in here because I didn't have anyone, anything, anywhere to go. That's why I uh, decided to go back. I decided to go and and be killed. I mean, that's unbelievable. So she has no life, no family in the States. Her family's back in Iran, but she knows if she goes back to Iran and sings, if she does what she does, she'll be jailed or, as she says, killed. She has no choice, really. Both options are terrible. No, I mean, it's really quite stunning to hear about it. And when we were sitting backstage at the Hollywood Bowl, I was just thinking to myself, you know, okay, who are her contemporaries here in America, you know, around that similar age? Maybe like an icon like a Barbara Streisand or an Aretha Franklin, these iconic female performers who've never had their careers entirely erased by a government. That just hasn't happened here in America. But that's what happened to Gagouche. And so for the next 21 years uh, after the revolution, her life as a pop diva just It's just disappeared. It's impossible to have a conversation about an artist from Iran right now and not think about the recent news about the president pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. Did politics 
especially politics in relation to the United States and Iran, come up at any point in this concert or are the people talking about the show? Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, Gugush mentioned, you know, she made very political statements throughout the night, especially about women's rights. It was on the eve of Mother's Day, so she dedicated the show to women and women's rights and mothers around the world. But she chose to end with a song that flashed a uh, video on the big screens at the Hollywood Bowl. There was a montage of the times during the revolution in the late 70s uh, with the Ayatollah Khomeini and the last Shah of Iran. And kind of alternately people booed and cheered. And it was a very clearly political moment. And uh, it ended on kind of uh, a note about freedom and expressing the voice. And that just let everybody just kind of explode with cheers. And that was a great way to end the show. Even though I didn't see it, I am now, thanks to you, a Gagoosh fan. Did you bring me a T-shirt, a hat, any merch? <laughs> I should have done that. But you know what, John? There's always Vancouver, you and me. Okay, we're going to go see Gagoosh in Vancouver if we can get KPCC to pay for it. Marcos, thanks for coming in. <laughs> you never know. Thanks, John. <laughs> Vishnu, I'm suffering. 